At the end of last year, we reviewed a whole slew of Bluetooth headphones with active noise cancellation on board. We did the Sony WH-1000XM5, the Bowers & Wilkins PX7S2, the Bowers & Wilkins PX8, the Focal Batiste, and then also the Sennheiser Momentum for wireless. And those Sennheiser ended up being, I guess what I would call my daily driver since then. They're, they're definitely my pick of those Bluetooth headphones that we reviewed at the end of last year. And I realized that they are very much a, well, they're more a value type headphone. I know that 400 euros or 300 euros for a Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphone is expensive, but it's not as expensive as what we're going to tackle today. Because today we're going to look at one, maybe two very pricey Bluetooth headphones with active noise cancellation built in. This video is brought to you by Rune 2.0, the revolutionary music player designed for true music fanatics. Click to runelabs.com for more information. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, at the start of 2022, Mark Levinson really shocked us with a 1,000 euro Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphone called the number 5909. And it really did move the needle on what one could expect from a Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphone, both in terms of price, but also, also performance. Because Srijan Ebain at Six Moons and I reviewed the number 5909 on the Darko Audio podcast in the middle of last year. And we both found them to be really a cut above the competition, both in terms of price and performance, but also I guess one thing that we tend to forget, or I often forget about the, the Mark Levinson headphones is that they can be run as a passive headphone. They don't actually need to be run as a Bluetooth headphone. You can plug them into a normal headphone amplifier. And make no mistake, those Mark Levinson headphones, they completely spank the Sennheiser, my daily driver Sennheiser, in terms of clarity, layer separation, and refinement. But May 2022 brought another contender into the high-end Bluetooth active noise cancellation headphone space. And that was the Solitaire T from T plus A, which sells for, wait for it, 1300 euros a pair. Now they aren't the most expensive Bluetooth headphones in the world. That title still belongs to Audio Technica. But I believe that the Solitaire T from T plus A or T plus R or however you want to say it, I believe they are the most expensive active noise cancelling headphones in the world at time of taping. So in this video, we are going to conduct the mother of all side-by-side -side comparisons to see if the new Solitaire T from T plus R blow the Mark Levinson number 5909 out of the water. Now this video is predominantly about these Solitaire T from T plus A, but we're gonna feature the Mark Levinson heavily, obviously as the comparator to kind of tease out how good these T plus A actually are or aren't. Now, obviously, because both these headphones are designed to be worn out in the street so that you don't get a lot of noise coming into your ear or a lot of sound leakage from your headphones, obviously they are closed back models. And the T plus A utilize 42 millimeter biocellulose drivers. And that's slightly larger than the 40 millimeter drivers found inside the Mark Levinson, which are coated with beryllium, which I know really excites people who love beryllium tweeters. They kind of get really hot under the collar when they hear the word beryllium. It's like catnip for some audiophiles. But whilst we're comparing numbers, the T plus R headphones give us a whopping 70 hours of runtime from a full charge of their battery. Now that's almost double what the Mark Levinson promised to us. And it's really kind of on par with my favorite Sennheisers, which also offer in the region of 70 hours between charges, which I think is absolutely fantastic for a headphone if you're gonna take it on a long haul flight or yeah, basically on vacation. And also both of these headphones, both the number 5909 and the Solitaire T offer multi-point connectivity. So you can pair them with more than one device if you need to. I don't really often do that. I, I don't know, I just, it's not something that is really part of my sort of every day, but I know it is for many of you, so I am mentioning it here.
Now, what about advanced codec support? Because that can have an impact on what we hear from our Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphones. Well, the Solitaire T give us SBC, which is standard, has to be in, in the headphone according to the Bluetooth spec. We also get AAC and then we get Aptex and Aptex HD. Whereas the Mark Levinson swap out the Aptex HD for LDAC. So that's Sony's codec, which is now inside every single, pretty much, Android phone. But obviously, if you're using an iPhone, your connection will always be an AAC connection. Always. And I guess this is a good time to remind people that no, neither of these headphones, no matter what they say on the box, they don't do high-res audio or even CD quality audio without compressing it slightly, without throwing some data away. Both of these headphones come with a companion smartphone app which are functionally fine, but nowhere near as sophisticated as the app provided by, say, Sony or Sennheiser. And to be honest, I didn't really need to use either of these apps unless I wanted to update the firmware on each of these headphones. Now, the T plus A have one key advantage over the Mark Levinson in that they give us gesture control on the right ear cup so we can swipe up and down for volume control and tap it for play pause. And then if we hit the circular area that's sort of marked out on the right ear cup, we can activate transparency mode. Now I've found that a little bit fiddly to hear until I realized that you can just pretty much use them like the Sony by just putting your hand over it and it will temporarily activate transparency mode, then take it away and it's back to normal active noise cancellation or not depending on what you have activated at the time. But if I have one haptics related criticism of the T plus A headphone is that I wish the buttons on the back of each ear cup were larger and or better spaced. Because sometimes I kind of put my hand around the back of one of the ear cups thinking I was activating active noise cancellation, but turns out that I've kind of just activated my Google Assistant or Siri or something like that. So it's not very intuitive around the back of each ear cup and I'm hoping that yeah, T plus A will take that criticism on board and maybe consider that for the next iteration of this headphone. Let's pause for a moment to talk about a recommended album. This week, I wanna recommend ABC's Lexicon of Love, which is a pop record at heart, but I've always found it has a kind of darker, artier underbelly. Maybe that's because of Trevor Horn's excellent production smarts, I don't know. But this 2023 edition comes, in this case, on a Blu-ray disc, and it has a Dolby Atmos mix done by Stephen Wilson, but it also has a stereo remix and an instrumental stereo remix also done by Stephen Wilson. Now those stereo remixes, including the instrumental version, are also available on streaming services and they are also available for purchase. And I acquired a, a set of flax of each one, not the Dolby Atmos mix, just the stereo and the instrumental mix. And I ran them through the DR Offline Mark II software from Mart and I've got to say, I was absolutely staggered at the result. The dynamic range of these new mixes by Stephen Wilson in 2023 have a dynamic range average of 14. That's incredible for this particular year where dynamic range compression, as we know, is far more prevalent than it was. So hats off to Stephen Wilson for executing a new remix. So yes, it is slightly different to the original, but it's not a radical departure but also maintaining the dynamic range of the recording because the original CD, I've got it here somewhere, the original CD, just arrived actually, I just bought this. This has a dynamic range of 14. So yeah, well done Stephen Wilson. You've actually made me go and order another album from the Super Deluxe Edition online store that's also got Stephen Wilson remixes on it and maybe I'll feature that in an upcoming video. Now the active noise cancellation here, I would say is only two thirds as good as the Apple AirPods Max. And I would say the same about the Mark Levinson. In that the Solitaire T, they can remove the low rumble of traffic from what you hear from behind your headphones, but they don't really push away the, the conversation, say in a cafe, as well as the AirPods Max do. So it's really not a criticism because it's just that Apple is so good at active noise cancellation that anybody else trying to enter that game is always gonna come up short. It's just the nature of the beast because obviously Apple can throw 
far, far more money at this problem. And I would also say the same of transparency mode. It's not as good as the Apple AirPods Max, but it's pretty much on par with the Mark Levinson. Now we get to the Solitaire T's first party trick, and it's called HQ mode. Now what this is, is that in normal active noise cancellation mode, there is a Qualcomm chip that receives the Bluetooth signal and then hands that off to a Sony chip, which takes care of ANC, phone calls, DA conversion, and amplification. But in HQ mode, the Qualcomm chip's I2S output is diverted to a different chip. It's diverted to an ESS Sabre chip. And that ESS Sabre chip doesn't do active noise cancellation, but it does offer, according to T plus A, higher quality DA conversion and amplification than the Sony chip, which was obviously in operation when we were having normal active noise cancellation in play. Do you see what I mean? So you either have active noise cancellation or you have HQ mode. But HQ mode and its higher quality playback, it does have an impact on battery life. It actually halves the battery life of these headphones, which then brings them more into line with what we get from the Mark Levinson. Now in my listening tests, I found that HQ mode offered much better clarity and detail from playing Neil Young and Crazy Horse's Ragged Glory, the new Smell the Horse version. Like it's, it's noticeably better than when we've got the ANC mode turned on. Even though the benefit of ANC is good, I don't think it outweighs what we get from HQ mode. Oh yeah, the sun's coming out, bugger. And therefore, I prefer listening to the Solitaire T with HQ mode on, so ANC off, even when I'm walking around here, around the streets of Berlin. And that's probably because the Solitaire T's passive isolation, so just the way it cups the ears, is pretty damn good. People like to make the argument that high-res audio or lossless audio is wasted on portable audio when we're out in the street. And I certainly used to think this way, but there is a purity from a higher quality signal or higher quality playback that we get that sometimes even though active noise cancellation is engaged, it, it doesn't really impact that purity. What about phone calls? Because I've used both the T plus A and the Mark Levinson for phone calls out and about in the streets of Berlin during the last, what, six to eight weeks since I've had them. And I guess it's pretty conclusive as far as I'm concerned when talking to the other people, so the other people, the people that I phone, that they tell me that my voice doesn't suffer a kind of sort of a harder, crisper edge at the hands of the Solitaire T as it does at the hands of the Mark Levinson. And people at the other end, these mysterious people also tell me that the T plus A seems to push away further or eliminate better wind noise and traffic noise. Now we come to the T plus A headphones second party trick, because not only is this an active noise cancellation Bluetooth headphone, it can also be run as a passive headphone without any power turned on. You can just plug it into a headphone amplifier or portable player and you're off to the races, just like the Mark Levinson. Now the impedance here is 64 ohms, which is twice that of the Levinson, but I believe that the Solitaire T are more sensitive. But whatever the, the mathematics or the impedance numbers or the sensitivity numbers tell us, you will have no problem driving the Solitaire T even from a fairly modest power source. I use them with an Aston Kern SP3000, which is obviously a very expensive portable player, but I also had no problem powering them with a Fio KA2 dongle DAC attached to my phone. And I could do that because inside the box, as well as a three and a half mil terminated analog cable, there's also a 4.4 mil Pentacon balanced terminated cable, which is very useful. And it's also great that these aren't sort of Y split cables, they just go into one ear cup. But if I were to be really nitpicky about the T plus A, I would say that it's a pity 
that relative to the Mark Levinson cables, the T plus A cables, they feel a bit cheap because they're sheathed in plastic and they're a little bit microphonic. And the Mark Levinson cables, I don't think are, and they're sheathed in a kind of fabric. As an interesting aside, it's kind of a bit unusual to see an analog connection between a phone and a pair of headphones where the headphone end is actually a USB-C socket, even though it's an analog connection. And that's what we get with the Levinson. So don't freak out if you see that and think, oh, that needs to go into the phone, because it doesn't. It goes into the headphones. Whereas the, the T plus A are more traditional, and the, the headphone end of the cable is a 2.5 millimeter plug. Now, where these headphones diverge is on target curve tuning because the Mark Levinson are made by Harman International, so it kind of is predictable, really, that they have been tuned pretty much close to the Harman target curve. But when I spoke to the chaps at T plus A a few months ago, they told me that they didn't believe that the Harman target curve was the right choice for them, and they've gone in a different direction in voicing their headphone. So let's talk a little bit more about sound quality, because I would say that the Solitaire T are more detailed than the Mark Levinson when playing back Kangding Ray's Solon's Ark. That's electronic music. But if we play something like Giant Sand, then we get more, I guess, more obvious air from the recording from the T plus A than we do from the Mark Levinson. And the T plus A aren't quite as relaxed sounding as the Mark Levinson. They're more crisp, they're more incisive. They just have that kind of more of a squeegee clean vibe than do the number 5909. And I would also say that the Solitaire T kick a little bit harder in the low end. So I would say that the transient response is a bit keener from the T plus A. Alternatively, we might refer to that superior transient response as better dynamics. Now, the Solitaire T aren't as good with dynamics as the Focal Stelia, but then again, what is? But those Focal headphones are strictly passive and they're almost twice the price of the Solitaire T. And if we look for a more sort of comparable model in the passive world, I would say that the Mark Levinson are closer in their overall gestalt to the Meze Lyric. But it's a fact that needs underscoring several times that both of these active noise cancelling Bluetooth headphones can also work as passive headphones and they both do so admirably. I have no quibbles about their performance in the passive domain with a portable player or plugged into one of the many amplifiers that I use here. And in fact, the Solitaire T were first designed as a passive headphone. It's only later that they decided to add the necessary electronics to make them work as a sort of go out of the house type headphone. How do these two compare to the Focal Batiste? I can't tell you because I gave those Focal Batiste away on my Patreon, so I no longer have them. But before I gave them away, I did conduct a side-by-side -side comparison between the Batiste and the Levinson 5909. And for me, the Levinson won on every, pretty much every available metric in terms of clarity and transparency and also on head comfort. That's where I think the Levinson are much better than the Focal Batiste. And I think the T plus A are a step on from the Levinson, especially when it comes to overall transparency and rhythmic snap. However, I would say that I don't think that the build or the, the, uh, the look and the feel of these headphones from T plus A, they don't scream 1300 euros. Yeah, I think maybe the Levinson connote a better sense of being a luxury product than do these T plus A. But let us not forget that headphone success also largely depends upon its comfort factor. And both of these headphones grip my head just nicely. So they're not as loose as the Apple AirPods Max, but not as tight as the Bowers and Wilkins PX7 S2 or the PX8. They're kind of like a Goldilocks kind of fit and feel, which I think is Really, yeah, really superb. But this brings us to why, for me, the Solitaire T get the nod over and above the Mark Levinson, and not just in terms of sound quality. 
because we really need to talk about the Cyberman effect. And that's how a headphone makes me, being a two meter tall person, look like a bloody Cyberman when I'm out in the street. Now, I first noticed this when I saw the footage that we shot when filming the Meze lyric video about what, a year ago, year and a half ago. I thought, my God, yeah, I really do look like quite a monster there. So I really pay attention to this now when we shoot the B-roll of these videos. And the Levinson, I have to say, I would not wear these out of the house very often. They make me feel very self-conscious because I do feel like they have a greater Cyberman effect than the Solitaire T. Although nothing really competes with the Focal Batiste in that respect for me. I think they are the ultimate Cyberman effect headphone. Capture them alive. But it's worth reminding ourselves that of course, Headphones worn at home and only at home don't have to really conform to any aesthetic standard because no one can really see how ridiculous we look when savoring music in our chosen way. And every Abyss owner knows exactly what I'm talking about there. But when it comes to headphones that work at home, like the Solitaire T, like the 5909, but also are designed to go out in the street or on the train, or yeah, on a plane, I think aesthetics matter because they become more like clothing. And therefore, for me at least, the Cyberman effect is very real. And the T plus A don't make me feel that way as much as the Mark Levinson do. So really, I think the T plus A sound better than the Mark Levinson, but I am more likely to pick them up than the Levinson, in fact, pretty much always more likely to, to pick them up than the Levinson, when heading out of the house for the day. And in fact, so much so that these T plus A have now displaced my previous choice, the Sennheiser, the more affordable Sennheiser, as my go-to daily driver Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphone. And let me be very clear that the T plus A Solitaire T spank the Sennheiser in terms of clarity, separation, so layer separation and refinement even more than the Mark Levinson. Anyway, the light is now fading because I'm recording this at the very end of the day. So if you like this video, then please consider giving us a like below, especially if you thought it was informative or entertaining or a bit of both. And if you like my attitude towards Bluetooth headphones with active noise cancellation that I'm also willing to tackle the most expensive active noise cancellation headphones on the planet right now. I mean, why wouldn't I really? So if you dig that, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Hello, me again. You're watching this video on YouTube, but if you were watching it on Patreon, you'd get to see a more extended cut with a bunch of bloopers at the end that shows me stuffing up many, many times. And Patreon is also the only place where you will find my review of the Sony WF-1000 XM5 True Wireless IEMs. That video is never gonna to come to YouTube, it's only on Patreon. So if you'll consider supporting me over there, even if it's just for a month, just to buy me a cup of coffee or something, that would be awesome. Thank you very much.